Hey everyone, Les Taylor here, and today I have a review of the new Nikon Z7 full frame mirrorless camera. Let's get to it. I've been shooting on Nikon cameras for I think about 15 years now, but I actually began on a Canon film camera that my father had. That's when I began studying photography back in high school, and after I had studied for a couple of years, my parents, I think maybe for my birthday, bought me a, another Canon film camera. Unfortunately, a couple of years later that was stolen when I was in Europe, and so about a year or so after that, I got my first DSLR, and this was when DSLRs were just coming onto the market for your average user and I started with a Nikon D70. And I had that for several years until I upgraded to the D7000. And then after that, a couple years later, I upgraded to the D610. And that was my first full frame camera. And uh, that's been a great camera. I'm actually shooting this video on it, so I still use it. I've done a number of commercial projects with that camera, but I needed another full frame camera so that the D610 could be my backup. And so I decided with Nikon entering the full frame mirrorless market to go ahead and try the Z7. And I've been shooting the Z7 for a couple of months now. I've done some projects with it. I recently took it up to the Great Smoky Mountains National Park for a uh, just kind of a test run. I was shooting the fall colors there. And so I've been shooting with it for a while. I've got some good experience. And so in this review, I want to give you kind of a practical review of shooting the camera. I'm not really going to talk a lot about the particular specs and details, but I want to talk to you about what it's like to use it, some of the things I like, some of the things I don't like, and then I'll end with some final thoughts and recommendations about the camera. So let's begin with the points that I like about the Nikon Z7. First, I want to talk about the EVF on the Z7. EVF, in case you don't know, means electrical viewfinder. And this stands in contrast to an OVF, an optical viewfinder, that you find on your standard DSLR camera. So, honestly, I was very skeptical moving to the Z7 because of the EVF. That was a big sticking point for me because I love using an OVF. Obviously, as a photographer, light is really important. It's the key factor in your image. And so being able to directly see the light coming through your lens is a real benefit. So I wasn't sure that an EVF was going to be able to hold up to the standard that the OVF had set in my experience. And I can say honestly, after shooting with the Nikon Z7 for several months, my skepticism is totally gone. Uh, this EVF is incredible in a lot of ways. First and foremost, the quality is great. You know, when I think of an EVF, I think of, for example, the old video cameras where you could use an EVF, but it looked very digital. In some cases, it, it didn't even have color. That's kind of what I had in my mind, but this EVF is nothing like that. This is a high quality viewfinder, and there's a lot of perks that come along with this EVF that you don't get with an OVF. One of the points I really like about this viewfinder is the ability to do long exposures without covering the viewfinder. Now this isn't germane just to the Z7 to be sure. Any electrical viewfinder is going to have the same benefit, but it certainly does apply to the Z7. And this is important for me because if I'm out shooting, let's say a waterfall or a stream or whatever, you want to cover that viewfinder if you're using an OVF because otherwise the light leaks in through the back and you'll get this ugly purple line straight through your image. And you may not see it on your camera, but you'll definitely see it when you get home and you'll be very disappointed. But with an electrical viewfinder, you don't have to worry about that. I don't have to cover my camera anymore. I don't have to remember that tiny little plastic piece to fit on. Now some cameras have it built in, but I don't have to worry about that with an electrical viewfinder. It's not an issue. I can do a long exposure and I never have to cover anything and I'm not going to have to worry about any streaks or any light leaking. Another benefit to the EVF on the Z7 is the ability to preview the image in the viewfinder and to control the settings in the menu. And again, because this is such a high quality viewfinder, I can actually zoom in on the image in the viewfinder and look at small details and be able to see those without ever having to look at the back screen. Now, why is that a benefit? Well, let's say you're out in bright light. It can be really hard to look on the back screen and see the details in the image. It can be hard to see the screen at all at times. And so if you're looking through the viewfinder, you don't have to worry about that. It's all covered, you can see that, and yet you can still zoom in and see details. And because it's high quality, you can see those details well and tell whether that image is acceptable or not. And again, controlling the menu is also a benefit because again, it can be difficult to see in bright light, 
but with the viewfinder you can look through there, control that, and you don't ever have to pull the camera away from your eye. One final point I really like about this EVF is its low light performance. It has fantastic low light performance. And that was something I was worried about as well. You know, with an optical viewfinder, you can see however well your eye can see, but the EVF, I wasn't sure if it was gonna live up to that. But actually it's a benefit because at times, the EVF can help me see things that I would not be able to see with my actual eye. I mean, my eye, it has whatever kind of low light performance it has and I can't really do anything about that, but the EVF can actually allow me to see things that I wouldn't be able to see. Now, it might get a little bit grainy, but you can still see and it's gonna work well. And in my experience, it's been fantastic, even in low light situations. So if you're worried about that, I wouldn't. Um, it's, it's definitely impressed me in that situation as well. So suffice it to say, I love this EVF. Any skepticism that I had is definitely gone and I've come to really like it. In fact, sometimes it's hard to go back to the OVF on the D610 because I like this EVF so much, I wanna use some of those features and obviously they're not there on the OVF on the D610. I think that actually if you use it, you'll come to like it so much, you'll feel the same way. You'll wanna only use an EVF because of all the benefits that come along with using that feature. So uh, again, a great feature. If you're skeptical, don't worry about it. You're gonna love it. Let's talk a little bit about the size and weight of the Z7. Obviously, with a mirrorless camera, you're going to be thinking about the smaller form factor, the smaller weight that you get along with that. But I wasn't really sure if that was gonna to matter to me that much coming from the D610. I mean, the D610 is not a really big camera. It's not very heavy. It's the smaller line of the uh, full-frame DSLRs that Nikon makes, so I wasn't really sure if it was gonna matter that much. But I can say, even compared to the D610, this camera is much smaller and weighs noticeably less than that. Now again, this isn't in comparison to a D850 even, or some of the bulkier cameras made by Nikon. This is just in comparison to the D610, but I can tell a difference between the two, even just holding the two in my hands. You might not think it matters that much, but when I put it in my bag and it takes up less space, or I put it in my bag and I can feel that less weight, it definitely matters. After a day of carrying around a backpack with all your gear in it, it really matters to have that, that smaller form factor. So I have really liked that and it's maybe not a huge deal, but it's definitely a benefit that comes along with the Z7. And especially because you're not sacrificing the quality, you're not sacrificing the image size at all, that's a, a huge benefit in my mind. Despite the smaller size of the camera body, the images you create are anything but small. This is a 45.7 megapixel beast of a camera. It creates massive images. You can create huge prints at that size. And not only that, one of the big benefits for me is that I can actually crop the images and still have large images as an end result. In fact, this camera allows you to do in-camera cropping. You can use the DX mode basically within the camera, and that means you're going to shoot with the center of the frame. And so what happens then is your lens gets a little bit extra reach. For example, when I was in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, I was shooting a sunset, and I was shooting with the 85 millimeter lens. And the 85 millimeter lens, because I used the cropping within the camera, it effectively turned into about 135 millimeters. So I got a significant amount of extra reach, which really mattered in that situation, and yet I'm still able to create large images. Now this matters for me because I also shoot for stock photography along with my commercial projects, and with stock photography, you want to be able to sell larger images because you're going to get more money if the client buys that largest possible image. Even when I'm using the cropped version within the camera, I can still create the largest possible image size that I can sell on my stock portfolio. So that's a great benefit to me, one that I think any photographer is going to enjoy. As nice as it is to have large images, you don't want to do that at the expense of image quality. But that's not something you have to worry about with the Z7. The Z7 image quality is exceptional. And I've seen this especially at high ISOs. Now obviously if you're shooting at a low ISO, you expect to get lots of detail. But when you shoot at high ISOs, you can really easily lose that detail and get tons of noise. But even shooting at the higher ISOs on this camera, I've noticed much less noise than I saw on the D610 and much better image quality overall. And one of the benefits I've seen to this as well is the ability to use a single RAW file to create multiple images that I can then blend together. So when I'm doing landscape photography or really any kind of photography, architecture or whatever it might be, I tend to take multiple images, I usually bracket, and then I blend those images together in Photoshop. 
Now, typically I'm going to use separate images. They're taken at the same time, but at different exposure levels in the camera. And I still do that with this camera, but in some situations that just doesn't work. For example, when I was in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, I was shooting some of the fall colors. And obviously with trees and leaves, things move from frame to frame very quickly. And so blending those images together can be very difficult, if not impossible in some situations. So if you can take a single image and make multiple versions of that within Lightroom and then export that to Photoshop and blend those together, that's going to work a lot better. But sometimes if you do that, if the original image quality is not good enough, then you're going to lose detail in the shadows, for example, and you don't want to do that. But I've been able to take single images, single RAW files from the Z7 and make multiple exposure images from that and then blend those together for a high quality final image. So that's a real benefit to this that I only really have to shoot one image and yet I'm still going to get all that information in the RAW file that I can work with in post-processing. If that didn't make any sense to you, in short, the image quality is very high and you're going to be able to do a lot with a single image taken on the Nikon Z7. Those are some of the points that I've liked about the Z7 since I got it a couple of months ago. And there's certainly more that I could share because there's a lot to love about this camera, but I think that covers the main points that I've enjoyed in my time shooting it. Now, with that said, there are some things that I'd like to see improved on this camera in future iterations. So I'll share a few of those points with you now. The first improvement I'd like to see has to do with video. Now, I'm mostly using this for photography, but I have started to get into video recently. And with the Nikon Z7, you can shoot 4K, which is amazing. Unfortunately, you cannot shoot 4K at 60 frames per second. And so what that means is that you can't slow down that video at all. You can shoot at 30 frames per second at 4K, and that's great. But if you want to slow it down, you're going to have to move down to full HD, that is 1080p. That's not really a big issue for me at all. I don't want to act like it is. Again, I don't shoot a lot of video, and uh, the 60 frames per second isn't really going to impact me for the most part. But it would be a nice feature to have, and I'd like to see that in future versions of the camera. Another improvement I'd like to see on the Z7 is battery life. Now don't get me wrong, the battery life on this camera is actually very impressive. I haven't had any issues with it myself. That said, I would like to see better battery life on these kind of cameras because the fact is when you're shooting with an electrical viewfinder and you're having to use that, you're going to drain the battery faster than you are with a camera that uses an optical viewfinder. And I think the more improvements they can make with this, the better it's going to be in the long term because you really want that battery life to be able to compete with a standard DSLR that uses an optical viewfinder. So any improvements they can make on that in the future I think is only going to make this camera better. But it's not really a negative, it's just something I'd like to see continue to increase over coming generations. This next point is a really small one. It may be very particular to people, um, but it's something I cared about so I thought I'd mention it. So the back here you have this lovely screen. This, this back screen is just beautiful. It's sharp. Great color, you can zoom in, um, it has touchscreen features. I mean, it's, it's a fantastic screen here, okay? I, I love this thing, and that's why I want to protect it. But unfortunately, this did not come with a plastic cover. Now, to some extent, that makes sense because with this screen, you can see it pops out. And so I can pop it out like that, which is a great feature to have. With that comes the greater possibility of the screen getting scratched. And so even if they didn't give a hard plastic cover, if they gave one of those soft ones like you can put on your smartphone, that would have been a really nice addition in the box. It's a really small thing, but it's something that I noticed and uh, something I'd like them to add, or at least think about adding in the future. The final improvement is one that has been rehashed over and over, and I know a lot of people have a lot of different opinions about it, but this camera, the Z7, only comes with a single card slot. Now, the card that you can use is XQD, so it's a really nice, fast, high-quality card, and that's great. But definitely having two card slots matters to me. Um, if I'm shooting a commercial project, it's really nice to know that I have that backup just in case something goes wrong. Knock on wood, right? But I've never actually had a card go out on me. But I know too many photographers who have, and it seems like it's just a matter of time before it does happen to me. And if you're shooting a commercial project, you've done a lot of work, and all of a sudden your card, you can't use it anymore, that's a big problem. So having a second card slot would really matter to me. It would be a major improvement on future generations of this camera. Now, I'm not going to say it's a deal breaker. If it is for you, well, then it's good to know that. But 
For me, it wasn't. Um, I knew about it before I got it, and I still chose to get it anyway. And I'm not really that concerned about it. There are other methods that I can use to make sure I have a backup, but having an in-camera backup would be really nice, and I'm sure that they're going to add that in the future, but um, especially on a camera at this price range, having a, a second card slot would have mattered a lot to me personally. So the final question is, is this camera worth the price tag? Just the body and the lens adapter alone are going to run you around $35 to $3,600. So that's certainly not a cheap price tag, obviously, but neither is this a cheap camera. This is a high quality camera that is going to produce high quality results. And for me, it's been worth it. When I think about buying equipment, the question that I ask is, is this going to increase the value that I can give to a client? Is this going to change the way that I shoot in some way that's going to allow me to produce something that I cannot produce with the equipment I currently have? And the answer for me is yes with this camera. Before I bought this, there's things that I could not do that I can do now with this camera. And I've already experienced many things, much of which I've already mentioned throughout this video, but many things that I can do that I wasn't able to do with my past equipment. So for me, it is worth it and I have not regretted purchasing it at all. Is that going to be the same for you? I can't say, it depends on your shooting style, it depends on your needs. Obviously there's other options on the table. They have the Z6, which is the little brother and still a very capable camera. There's also other options. If you're just starting out, I certainly wouldn't recommend doing this. I mean, maybe if you've got all the money that you need, go for it. But if you're just starting out, shooting with something like the D7000 series. That's a great series still today, and I would highly recommend that to anybody just starting out photography. But if you're moving along, you're ready to take the step up, and you're wondering, is this camera really worth it? My answer is yes. I love this camera. I'm gonna be shooting with it for a long time, and again, I don't regret the purchase at all. I hope this review has been helpful to you. Uh, maybe it's helped you decide whether this is the camera for you or not. But if there's any question that I haven't answered that you would like answered, please feel free to ask in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer anything I can about the Z7 and my experience with it. And if this video has been helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel. I'll be offering more reviews like this, as well as behind the scenes videos and different tips and tricks for editing your photos in the near future. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one. But until then, stay safe and happy shooting.